What you are about to see is the truth of what really happened with the YouTuber known as Dad. We uncover what really happened in his life from Act 1 to 4. Now, we do not cover every detail of Dad's life. If we were to do that, we'd be here for years. There are people, places, and events not mentioned in today's expose. If you wish to experience every element of Dad's average normal life, please absorb Dad's complete story located on his YouTube homepage. But before we begin with the video, we would love to tell you about a great place in online. The Server Files Discord Server. A great place for activities, words, lore, images, clicking, theorizing, investigating, sharing, deep friendship, memeing, gifing, posting, chatting, looking, and existing. So go on, join today. Now, on with the video. Before we begin, we should mention that before the Dad Channel existed, a man named Nathan was kidnapped and brainwashed by a scientist named Cheryl. She wanted to take advantage of his father-like looks and turn him into a pop star and famous YouTuber for her own benefit. But unfortunately for her, Nathan's brain was too powerful for brainwashing, so she got rid of him by dumping him in a dried-up lake bed back in the year 1999, so he wouldn't be able to rat on her. But we'll touch more on that later. Now, the first thing we'd see on the Dad channel was in 2019. It was a video called Dad Uploaded. We see Dad observing other dads out in the world, being fathers. He seems to be gathering information. Then the next video begins with what seems to be Dad's life in Town, USA. Dad woke up for yet another day of hard work at company, but he couldn't find wife anywhere. How would he get his morning kiss on the cheek to start his day? Understandably, Dad had a horrible day of work without his kiss, but at least he could get one when he comes home from work. Nope, still no mom and no daughter anywhere to be found. Where is Dad's family? Dad ate a can of food alone until family came home. It turns out they went to restaurant without Dad. Then they went to bed without having a nice family chat. Dad didn't feel good. Dad sent PewDiePie a message. Daughter talked to her boyfriend Griffin on the phone, and Mom definitely talked to Diane on the phone and no one else. Neighbor chopped wood with his crappy axe from Dirk's discount tools. Mom found Dad magazine. Mom didn't feel good. Family finally had a nice dinner together. Well, not Mom. She still didn't feel good. Daughter got Mom drunk and snuck out of the house at night. Dad perved on some true value deals. Dad loves Mom. Dad loves Mom. Dad loves Mom. Dad loves mom. Dad loves Diane. Ella? Dad blacked out here. Hmm, what's this place? Futuristic. It looks so modern. Act one ended and act two started off with a man named Anton who fell to earth. We saw some of his life in another crashed space traveler named Emily Ridley. A detective named Carl snuck into the top secret facility. Little towels appeared on table. Dad sure did enjoy those. Dad blacked out again, and Andon woke up. Luckily, Mom quickly brought Dad a much tastier can of food. Ugh, Laszlo, daughter's favorite pop star. She's so weird. Dad just doesn't get it. Dad had a nice dream where a True Value employee named Crothers gave Dad free tools and offered Dad a way out, whatever that means. Daughter cut her hair and snuck out to meet Griffin, but he never showed up. Family went to a restaurant to celebrate Dad reaching 40,000 subscribers. Mmm, food sauce. Turns out, Neighbor planted Dad magazine in Dad's house. Neighbor also put Mom's romance novel, Dirty Little Secret, in the house. Dad enjoyed a relaxing Father's Day outside of True Value. Mom went to work and worked on quantum mechanics, as usual. Mom sniffed some flowers and acted strangely. Seems like some sort of a server malfunction. Emily left a message for Andon that crashed spaceman. The planet CFB was close to Earth around that time. Diane came over and Dad may or may not have sniffed her while saying hello. She called Dad and in for some reason. The server clients had a chat, and old Carl was on to them. Daughter spent an afternoon with Griffin. They were headed to the mall, but Griffin had to do boy stuff first. Diane came over again, and Dad may or may not have definitely sniffed her perfume after greeting her. And he may or may not have been caught. Diane invited Dad over to her place to tell her dad jokes sometime. Mom wasn't happy. Poor food. 
Griffin's boy stuff was actually a conversation with neighbor about breaking into dad's house to find out information about dad. Griffin seemed hesitant about it until neighbor gave him a quarter. Neighbor came into dad's yard to show off his stupid mustache until dad humiliated him with an entire beard. Dad surprised mom with his beard and she finally gave him a kiss on the cheek. But Beard blocked the kiss, and Dad's cheek never got it. Dad felt mad. The server upgraded, but Mom didn't authorize it. Hmm. Mom went to apologize to Dad for getting upset about Dad's magazine. But Dad felt pretty disgruntled after going so long without getting any cheek kisses. And he wasn't paying attention to her because Minecraft, 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 Minecraft. Dad came to his senses and planned to apologize to Mom until he ate a little towel. Then, Andon woke up. Turns out, Dad was the crashed spaceman named Andon and he was being brainwashed with cans of food to play the role of dad. But why? Andon broke out of the top secret facility, which happens to be a YouTube building. Mom came home with a present for dad and discovered Andon had escaped. So she ran to neighbor's real house. Turns out, neighbor's real name is Malvin. Ew, what a dumb name. They set out to find Andon and old Carl was onto them. Then, finally, we see Lieutenant Emily Ridley setting out to find help for her crashed captain, Andon Real but it seems she doesn't know he's been taken and held captive in the top secret facility. Where is Emily now? Where is Andon? If you watched episode one of act three, titled Dad Feels Avum, you would see Andon's on the run. He's trying to find range so he can contact his wife, Ella, back on Kepler 22B. During a pit stop, he meets Crothers, who tells him not to stop and there will be a death in the future. Ooh, spooky. We then saw back in 2017 when Cheryl first started working on the facility in her big mysterious plan. She tells her ex-husband Malvin, aka Neighbor, that she's holding crashed astronaut and in real captive and she needs his help. What the fuck? He obliged. Then, back in 2020, we saw the server start acting strange. Mom had a meltdown when she learned Andon escaped and in her fit she emotionally affected daughter and then she started acting weird. Mom activated a dad bot as damage control until she could get Andon back. Dabot222 is now on. Server still acting weird. More blinkies. Dadbot went to work where Boss was the worst and Marty had it easy. Boss gave Dad an e-phone from Bardo Industries so Dad would have to work even when he was at home. Ugh, Boss is the worst. Cube. Diane came by to tell Dad a big secret. It was hard for Dad to listen with all her perfume stuck in his nostrils. Diane told Dad that when they first met, she sniffed his fart and had a baby. Wow, science man. It seems sniffing really is cheating. It seems these bots were created with the smell sense as a means to transfer data and energy. Maybe because real humans have so much emotion and memory tied to scent. Hmm. Crothers visited Cheryl in a dream and warned her to not pursue Andon and said to return Nathan to the future. They both need to exist in their own times and planets. Otherwise, she could break the whole dang universe. She woke herself up to stop listening to his boomer speech and we saw that she and Malvin had a pajama party. Lude. Cheryl flipped out on Malvin when he insulted dad and her family. She then asked him to shut down the clients, AKA the men in black, in order to sort out a glitch in the server. It seems the orbs have not been operating correctly after one tried to influence her. Is her programming working against her? After being slapped in his mustache, Malvin agreed to help her. Simp. We then saw Dadbot222 relax in Big Park to try and process this information from Diane about their secret baby. Then we see Malvin's hand with a neuralizer gun shut down not only a client, but also Griffin and Dadbot222. Why? They were innocent. After a Dadbot is rendered incapacitated, the server will instantly send an orb to activate yet another Dadbot, transferring all previous active Dadbot's memories and data as well as the ones taken from Nathan and Andon. After the server activated Dadbot69, Nice. He then took over as the acting dad. And oh boy, did this one sure love live streaming. Cheryl had a moment of clarity and took Crothers' advice. She sent Malvin out to take Nathan back to 2020. But it seems Nathan was infected by an alien parasite when in the facility van next to Andon's spacesuit. You see, when Andon was first captured, Cheryl also dumped Nathan in the dried lake bed near the crash. So when Nathan came back, so did an alien entity that took over his body and called itself human. Wow. This is some good tea. We then saw just how massive the facility really is. And now you know where town is located. Level 29, inside the top secret facility. Come on by. Join us. Kane already did. Nathan made his way home, but was completely taken over by the alien fungus inside him. The fungus later transferred itself to a younger human host. The dad family saw in the True Value music video. 
Shortly after, a mysterious man calling himself the Computer Master kidnapped the woman, leaving Nathan for dead in the street. Luckily, old Carl's on to him. If you've been watching the Mila uploads on Dad's channel, you will have learned more about this computer dingus, I mean, master, and the woman now acting as host to the alien parasite. Back in Dad's average life, we saw that it wasn't actually Malvin who killed DadBot 222 and Griffin, but it was DadBot 69. Not nice. Why would he do this? How did he get activated while 222 is still operational? So much tea. Oh, the server now has a voice. Cute. Such a smart cue. Daughter hasn't heard from Griffin in a while since DadBot69 killed his life. So after mom yelled at her and her boyfriend ghosted her, literally, she then glitched and had a major meltdown and died. Poor daughter. Turns out she was also a bot. Cheryl created an entire bot family. Diane came over again to tell DadBot that he needs to live his life for himself, feel his own feelings, and ignore the ones programmed by Cheryl and the server. She also told him that their child is a daughter. Then she ran off to Bora Bora. The server, calling itself Cube now, didn't quite like Cheryl's programming for the DadBots. So Cube ameliorated the entire network and initiated a system-wide wipe. This went into effect right when Dad's subs, also known as ADOS, were being incredibly generous to him in Discord by bank pranking him with donations. DadBot69 then had a meltdown and literally blew a gasket. Poor DadBot69. But who killed him? The subs with kindness? Or Cube's upgrade? Cube then activated DadBot A7M2, a more advanced bot, able to handle more emotions, who will never disobey the server. Long live Cube. Cube upgraded itself yet again and named herself Scarlet. But what did she order from Bardo Industries, the leader in technology and mechanics? Mom threw away daughter and wondered what was wrong with the server. Why are all the bots malfunctioning? So her new plan is to activate him. Who is him? Back at work at company, Dad still has piles of paperwork to do, while Marty has none. Ugh, stamping is so hard. Dadbot sort of had a panic attack, so Marty took him out to Little Park to get some fresh air. It worked. Dad felt much better. Until Frisbee killed Marty to death. Oh! After Marty's horrible death from being murdered by Frisbee, and definitely not Dad, we saw the hour and 15 minute Act 3 finale. Now this one is long, so let's just hit the key points. Andon escaped the facility. The engineer who worked in the facility, but had been fired by Cheryl, was tracking him. He then met up with Andon to tell him the truth about Cheryl. That she was trying to earn money through this majorly successful YouTube channel with a dancing bald dad to fund her scientific research involving quantum time travel and portals to find her dead daughter in another life. The usual motivation for a YouTube channel. Dirk's discount tools ran a crappy commercial, and we learned that Dirk looks a lot like dad, so he pretended to be his brother so he could have a free place to live after he burned down his store for insurance money. Andon found a satellite to make a connection with Neela. She told him that he has really old atoms, original atoms to be exact, from the dawn of creation. That's why he has quantum powers. The server, aka the cube, built itself a body. Dad's house is being haunted by a ghost named Maeve. Some grave diggers were looking for her. A goth kid named Jazlaney moved to town. She asked the teacher and Lazlo a lot of suspicious questions. Emily, Andon's co-pilot, used her coadjutor that she got from True Value to teleport home, even though it rapidly aged her. It was worth the price to leave Earth and return back to Kepler-22b. Turns out Jazz Laney was working for a cult named the Dark Party, consisting of Nexpo, Inside of Mind, and other investigative YouTubers. They were mad at her for failing to capture the ghost. They needed her ghost firmament to keep their evil cult powers. They then left on their scooters to possibly form a new plan. We. We. They know that Detective Carl was right there in his Metal Gear Solid disguise, listening to everything they said. As usual, old Carl's on to you. Andon shot Malvin in the penis with his quantum sledge, sending him to Alaska. Oh, my penis. Diane went to Bora Bora and something glowing blue was in the neighbor's shed. Then the act ended with Andon going back to the site of his crashed craft. He used his coadjutor to leave Earth and return to his wife Ella on Kepler-22b. He didn't age thanks to his quantum powers. Cheryl left for Kepler as well to find her reincarnated daughter. Dad bought A7M2 and Scarlet, aka the server who built itself a body, got married and had a baby server they named QB. Mom bought and Dad bought. Then we saw Dad bought 69 get up after blowing a gasket, revealing a large hole in the top of his head. Now, with no tracking device, he's free to roam the world as Diane suggested and live his own life. So he left town USA. 
Then Act 4 began. In the first episode, we saw a mountain in a frozen forest. It looks so very far away from Town, USA, which is located in the southwest of United North America. At the end of the video, we saw someone wearing boots standing on the mountain. Who could it be? Next, we saw Matthew Pathew demanding everyone obey the server. Always is obey the server. Looks like he's been feasting on cans of food. Oh, here's Dadbot A7M2. You can tell because he's wearing the tennis racket tie that he was wearing at the end of the Act 3 finale. With everything Dad is going through, I sure am lucky to have a loving wife to come home to and our brand new baby. He's walking home from work and enjoying the visual pleasure of his wife Scarlett and their child QB. Then, his wife Scarlett called his brain because she has that power. She has all the power. Wait a second. Someone was watching him. But who? Hey, it's the boots and pants we saw up on the snowy mountain. Who is it? Oh, it's Dadbot69. We can tell because he reveals the giant hole in his head. He's been walking for a while now. He's past some pretty interesting looking locations. But where is he headed? Obey the server. Obey the server. Matt Pat would really like you to obey the server. Oh look, it's the inactive dad bots down in the incubation room of the facility. One of them has self-activated. Scarlet and A7M2 meet up for a nice date at park. Scarlet notices how large dad's beard has gotten, and she says he'll adjust his growth bios. She then displays affection for him. I love you, 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 I love you. Goodbye. Kind of. Where is 6ix9ine now? It seems he's literally sniffing something out. His senses led him to a bottle of perfume on a deserted beach where he finds an actual treasure chest. Wow! Inside was a locked book, hiding an e-phone. On the e-phone was a message from Diane. So it was Diane's perfume that he'd been following across the country. Turns out Love's spell from Victoria's Secret is pretty strong. Diane left a riddle for Dad that led him to discovering a chaos ring and hopefully help him find a target. What's the target? Where is he going? Yes, Matt. We're obeying the server. Obey the server. Now all of the incubated bots are activating. Scarlet went for a walk through town USA. She was really enjoying the freedom of her new body. She ran some calculations and discovered there are many floors below the facility that no one has gained access to. What's below the facility? <gasps> that ominous figure is back. Oh no, it's the computer master. And now he wants to get to the bottom of the facility first. Not if I do first. <laughs> The incubated bots discussed how their bodies aren't activated, only their minds, so they can't leave. Maybe if they found out what was in the shed, they could use it to free themselves. It seems their plan is to wait for 6 9 to reach the target, because then they'll all be free somehow. Next we saw a very spooky house and a voice speaking Latin. Whose house is this? S. Who is speaking? Right after we heard Nathan talking about some weird symbols being written on the walls wherever he goes. What are these things? I find them all over the house. Sounds like the guy is cursed. His whole life is bad luck. Some other things to consider are all the other videos going up on Dad's channel. After all, every upload on Dad's channel is important and also incredibly entertaining. In the playlist titled Rory, we've seen a rogue dad bot who wears a different colored tie killing other YouTubers. He got what appears to be Markiplier, and is now coming for more. Then began the finale of Act 4, also known as the Second Implode. Ooh, ominous. Hey, it's that spooky house again where we heard the weird voice. Inside we see items belonging to Nathan. This must be his house. Guess it has that spooky old New England style. Inside, we saw him getting sucked into the VCR, then transported into a VCR in the facility, making Grave Stories episodes for the Dad Channel. That guy can't catch a break. We then got our first look at QB, now that he has grown from his infant cube shape. And here comes Dad by A7M2 with his tennis racket tie and his fancy new hair, thanks to Scarlet's new growth bios. QB then basically tells Dad to shut up and go away, cause he's busy feeding, feeding on information. 
That sure does look like a lot of data going through those wires. What information is Scarlet feeding him? Then we catch up with Dadbot69. He's made it so far, from the desert to snowy mountains, a lush forest, and now the sea. He really is looking more and more human. Must be as he gets farther and farther from the facility. He's living his own life, just like Diane hoped he would. We take a trip down memory lane to 2018, during the OVA days. Did you watch the OVA playlist? Pretty interesting stuff. In the OVA days is when they tested the dad bots in the facility before the YouTube channel even launched. This early model dad had hair. Gotta say, not a fan. Not very aerodynamic. The dad bot then talks to someone just out of shot. Her name is Aggie. According to the server files, that stands for Artificially Generated Individual. She then told Dadbot to come find her before teleporting out of there. So she must be the quote-unquote target he's been looking for. Flash forward to present time. Dadbot has his chaos ring from Diane. That's supposed to keep his atoms intact when teleporting with Aggie. That is, if he can find her. Oh boy, looks like Scarlet is snacking on the same thing as QB. Lots and lots of data. That looks like too much power to me. She says together, her and QB will achieve the prime objective pure existence. Uh, that doesn't sound great. Dadbot came home from work to find the whole facility empty. His house was absolutely destroyed. Things aren't looking good around here. Nope, not good at all. Scarlet is flying now. That's a major upgrade. And oh, Kubi's a big boy now. She tells Kubi to activate universal omission. Maybe that just means lower air pollution. Dadbot69 finally finds Aggie on the beach. Wow, she really is a computer-generated being that exists in 3D space. That's some high tech the facility was working on. That's like seeing Buzz Lightyear at Jiffy Lube. Oh no, it's Rory. Rory is error spelled backwards for those who can't do words good. He's the rogue Dadbot that built himself a body made out of a pile of discarded parts. He's the one going around murdering other YouTubers. It looks like he's coming after MatPat. Well. So much for that. Carl obliviously saved Matt by being distracted while driving listening to dad songs. Good job, Carl. Our hero. Dadbot 87 m 2 started shutting down. Then the dadbots in storage all shut down. Something is wrong with the server. Oh yeah, the server is now his wife gone mad and floating in the sky shooting lasers out of her kid's face. All right. It's the computer master. He finally made it to the bottom floor of the facility. Cheryl must have been hiding a big secret way down there. Oh, it's... Old Playboys. Well, if she didn't like motorcycle magazines, then these are definitely getting hidden in the basement. Aggie then teleports Dadbot69 and herself out of this universe and into another. Just in time, too. This universe is beginning to implode. Everything and everyone was instantly vaporized. It's that spooky voice again. Like the one we heard near Nathan's haunted house. They said, they have failed us. I think that's in regards to the dark party. Nice going, next bone inside of mind. You disappointed ominous voices hiding in space nebula. Wee. Wee. Hey, it's Dadbot222, arguably the most beloved Dadbot by ADOS. All Dad's awesome subscribers. Remember, he was shot by Dadbot69 back in Act 2 as part of their secret plan to tear apart Cheryl and Malvin, then get 69 out of the facility. Now that the other bots have been deactivated, or, well, vaporized, he's the only one left, so he got booted up to replace them. Unfortunately, he only has a few seconds to live, but he then pulls out a green orb, like the one we saw in Dad's bedroom eyes music video. He drinks the orb, then escapes to another universe. Jeez, this is some wild stuff. Are you still with me? Feels like one wild movie, doesn't it? Scarlet then had a quantum Karen conniption fit and imploded the entire universe. <laughs> And the spooky space nebula voices were erased too. Even the Discord with 9,000 of Dad's subs got imploded. Literally everything. Nothing exists anymore. It's all gone. But how am I talking? Who am I? And who is this? Matt Pat? He's still alive? Gotta talk Chrono Cross, right? Everything that they do with time travel, but now it's like multiple dimensions. And he's still going on about There's Chrono like Trigger. Hey, something appeared after the credits. But this wasn't in the original Act 4 ending. I wonder if everyone saw this. That looks like Town USA. Someone's mailbox. Whose is it? Pretty nice. Nice coat of paint. Wonder what hardware store it's from. 
did an ace of a job. Well, what's that sound? Voices? Hang on, gotta put a little filter on it. Hello, Eat. your appointment with Barbara is next. Please be prepared to begin the tour. We're so excited to have you. We think you're going to love it here. And of course, thank you for being you.